If your clutch plates are worn out, you'll likely feel your clutch slipping when you roll the throttle open. When that happens, it's time to replace your clutch pack. I'll show you how in this video from the MC Garage. Your clutch has a tough job to do. It's responsible for coupling and decoupling the engine from the rear wheel so that you can start, stop, and shift smoothly. The friction plates in your clutch are consumable parts and they wear with use. So at some point, they're gonna to need to be replaced. Here's how to do it. The first thing you need to do is either drain your engine oil or carefully lay the bike down on the ground so that all the oil pools to the opposite side of the engine. Also, while it's not the case with this Suzuki or most bikes, if your radiator hose is integrated into the clutch cover, you're gonna to need to drain your cooling system before you remove the cover. All right, now to remove the clutch cover itself. If your bike's clutch cable is attached to the cover, you'll need to disconnect that. Otherwise, just unscrew the bolts and carefully pull the cover away from the engine. Now, there's still gonna be some oil under there, so keep some rags handy to keep things clean. And also, check for any locating dowels that may come off with the cover or stay lodged in the engine. Now, if you're lucky, this gasket will come off in one piece, but more likely than not, it's gonna tear. So, it's important that you remove all the scraps from the cover and the engine so that your new gasket has a good seal. Next, unscrew the clutch spring bolts and set them aside along with the clutch springs. Then lift the inner pressure plate away, and using your fingers and a pick, remove the clutch pack one plate at a time. It's really important that you stack the parts in the order that you remove them so that you can reference them when you're putting everything back together. Also, pay special attention to any narrow friction plates or judder springs that might be sandwiched towards the back of the pack. This clutch is shot, and that's my fault because I hammered this clutch at the drag strip. These are the plates we just took out of the bike, and these are fresh plates. As you can see, the friction material is discolored and glazed, and the steel plates have been blued from getting overheated. Okay, now to install the new parts. The new friction plates need to be soaked in oil for at least a few hours prior to installation. Once they're ready, reinstall them along with the steel plates and any judder springs. Make sure everything goes back in the right order. Reference the old parts if you need to. That's why we laid them out. Now replace the pressure plate, making sure that the ridges on the pressure plate mate with the ridges on the inner hub. Next, install the clutch springs and tighten the spring bolts to the torque listed in your shop manual. The spec is usually no more than eight pound feet of torque. If your gasket came off in one piece and it's in good condition, technically you could reuse it, but new gaskets are cheap, so it's always a good idea to use a fresh one. Check to make sure that your locating dowels are in place and then double check to make sure that the mating surface is clean. Then install your fresh gasket and the clutch cover. Okay, now you just need to tighten your clutch cover bolts, reattach your clutch cable if you removed it, add engine oil if you drained it, and then just set your clutch lever free play and go for a ride. That's it for this video from the MC Garage. Feel free to leave your questions and comments below. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time.